What's up guys? I'm at SHOT Show. I stopped by the Phalanx Defense Systems booth in the law enforcement section. You may or may not have watched my video from last year, which is awesome. Got a lot of cool uh, products here. Their holsters, their Kevlar armor, um, first responder gear, things like that. Watch that video if you haven't seen it. But uh, this year they have uh, a new product and uh, let's take a look. So this year, they're coming out with these ballistic inserts, basically. They're, uh, they are soft body armor that you can put inside all kinds of different bags. Uh, with active shooters being um, a, something that we got to live with nowadays, especially me being from Las Vegas, October 1st massacre. This is on everybody's mind now, how to defend yourself in case you get caught in a situation where there's bullets flying and you don't have any cover. Well, you may have to use your backpack. And for schools, obviously, you know, they got pictures here of uh, backpacks for kids. They have little tiny inserts for the small ones that don't have full-size backpacks. By the way, these are um, these are level 3A, 44 Magnum and lower. You're gonna get uh, pretty good protection. So your little kids will use this one in their bags. And then uh, this one's a regular size backpack right here, you know, like a Jansport, you know, book bag. Then they have this large one here. This one will fit in pretty much any rucksack. So if you have a bug out bag, um, this is gonna be the panel that you want. It's, it's nice and tall. And uh, you can imagine if this was in a backpack, you can kind of see this covers the top of my chest all the way down to the bottom of my belly. So nice and large. And a lot of these were actually originally cut to fit vertex bags. You can see right here, it's a vertex bag. So for you, you high speed, low drag guys out there that like vertex, um, they have panels that are specifically cut for these backpacks. So pretty cool. And these are like sling packs. You can sling them across the front of your chest and then uh, you'll have essentially the bag will be just like that in front of your heart. So yeah, pretty cool. I like this. This is a, a simple, uh, affordable way to protect yourself in an active shooter threat environment. So let's kind of go over uh, a lot of the general stuff that we went over last year. So they're also famous for their stealth operator um, holsters that are famous for having like multiple, multiple, multiple guns that you can fit in one holster. I think uh, some of these are advertised as like 150 guns can fit in one holster. And a uh, little backstory that's kind of cool. I bought a Canik TP9 uh, SFX. It's the long slide uh, with the four uh, plates for um, optics on it. And I wanted uh, another holster instead of the one it came with. And their, um, their stealth operator fit it perfectly, just fine. So it was pretty awesome to be able to have that holster do that. And then over here, they have this thing called an uh, executive armor system. So normally you would carry this thing like a briefcase basically, like a laptop bag, doesn't look like anything big, but in a pinch, something goes down. You can see in the pictures there, you can open it up and wear it like a field expedient um, bulletproof vest for the most part. It's not rifle rated. Again, it's, uh, I believe this one's a 3A as well. So again, you're going to be protected from 44 Magnum and below. And then over here, like you saw last year, they got um, uh, rifle plates. Uh, matter of fact, they're the guys that market the uh, DKX line of rifle plates. They uh, are buoyant, they float, they uh, have plates that will withstand um, 7.62 by 51, all the good stuff. And then over here, they have um, EMS stuff. So if you're a firefighter, paramedic, first responder, um, they have all kinds of uh, kits you can have for active shooter response. If you're not carrying a um, tourniquet on you at all times, you know, you're really behind the curve because uh, I'll tell you right now, there was some people at that uh, massacre on October 1st that, and I can't confirm this, but I'm sure there were some people that were bleeding out. And when you have 50 people bleeding out, there's not going to be enough tourniquets to go around. I'm sure some people um, could have used tourniquets and they didn't have enough to go around. I'm just assuming that, that that's what happened. It's very possible. And for you guys that are first responders, paramedics, firefighters, um, it's not just cops getting shot at now. You know, they have this thing called force protection where the cops surround 
the uh, first responder to go in and rescue uh, people that are injured, you're going to need some uh, ballistic protection as well. And they, they have the gear for you guys as well. So you got to do what you got to do. You know, to save lives, sometimes you got to wear um, this combat gear. Even though uh, you, you're just a firefighter or an EMT, you're not carrying a gun, but you get shot at. Some of those guys get shot at. And there have been firefighters that have been ambushed. So good stuff here. Check them out. Phalanx Defense Systems.